Hey guys, Crazy Ike here. I've had quite a few requests from you for a mod list, and I've been putting it on the back burner far too long. So here's a quick run through of the mods that I use for my settlements. I run more than what I've shown here, but those mostly just affect gameplay and not my builds. And this list here will follow my load order. So let's get started. The first one I have is Snap and Build. Now, Snap and Build unfortunately isn't available anymore. Uh, I believe the mod author has been pretty much banned from the Nexus and from Bethesda for stealing assets. Um, but there's some great pieces in that mod that I still use. It's unfortunate that everything is removed. You guys might be able to find an archived version. The version that I use is actually 1.9, which was the last version he released. Now what separated Snap and Build from the other mods that have a lot of the same assets is all the snap points that he included. You can see here that I have a ton of different options when moving this around. This helped out a lot when I was building my stacks for the Ready Player One video. Probably one of the most downloaded mods, especially for settlement building, would be Homemaker. Just the sheer number of assets it provides is pretty incredible. I use it mainly for the pre-war assets that it provides, and I also use a lot of its landscape features. It has rocks and trees, and overall just a ton of great items to use. Unlock Settlement Objects, or USO. This might be one of the most comprehensive sets of mods. Not only does it have a full structures menu, but it also has just about every building category in the settlements with new assets. It's got a lot of the pre-war vehicles which I used in my Red Rocket Museum build, as well as as well as a full furniture category. With a lot of custom bedding, chairs, just to took decor options that match a lot of the curtains you find in the game, flags, as well as the abstract artwork. Which is a neat touch so you don't have the same piece of furniture or bedding in every house of your settlement. Next we have Snappy Builds, or Snappy House Kit. Now, this adds a lot of neat items that are similar to the buildings you find already in the Commonwealth. And it helps you kind of build in the same theme as what you would find out there. Besides the full prefabbed houses, you also have each piece. So you can custom make your house shape the way you want. Now I actually used that when building my house at the Kingsport Lighthouse. I was able to build the house the way I wanted it and it include not only an attic, but also a garage on the side of it, which wasn't normally there in that settlement. Next in my load order is Red Rocket Settlements. Now this one doesn't necessarily pertain to any of the settlement building, but it adds new settlements to my game. So I love the base Red Rocket. It's probably one of my favorite spaces to build in, just because it's a great theme. And this one adds a bunch of the Red Rockets that you find in the Commonwealth as a new settlement. A lot of the debris is moved, and he includes a few workbenches so that you can get started. Now, I really like this one. It's very unique to all of the other Red Rockets out there in the Commonwealth. And I'll probably feature it in one of my videos coming up soon. Rebuild Modular Sanctuary. Pre-war and post-war build set. I haven't used these as much as I probably should. Just because I haven't done a whole lot in the Sanctuary. But I did use these in my Ready Player One video to build my mobile homes. I wasn't able to find an asset that looked similar to what a single wide trailer would look like. But the sanctuary pieces fit the bill pretty well. Next in my load order we have longer power lines. It bothered me that the vanilla power lines could only be stretched so far. This mod gives me around three times the length available in the vanilla game. 
I can almost stretch them across to settlement, as long as they don't dip into the ground and the item turns red. Now for me that doesn't matter because I have place anywhere, but for you guys that might not have that mod, it will change how far you can run. Next mod in my load order is Very Small Generator. I use this one quite a bit when I want something powered either locally or outside of the settlement and I don't want long power lines ran. They look like just your typical power connector and the option that I chose was just 5 electricity. You can go with 5, 20 and I think even 100 but I just use the 5. It fits most of what I need. Probably one of the biggest time saving mods for me has been Creative Clutter. Creative Clutter just adds a ton of pre-decorated items that you can use. Some of them are finished, some of them are fairly open so that you can add your own personal touches, and I like that. I use this mod on every build that I've done. It just adds a great way to start a lot of the rooms that you're decorating. It also includes some furniture that you don't find in other mods, some patio furniture and chairs, and also some lighting effects that I enjoy. Next in my load order is OC Decorator. Now, just as it sounds, this adds a ton of really cool items that you can place throughout your player homes or your settlements. And what I like about the mod is all of the items are static, so they don't have any physics to them. Unlike some other mods, when you place down items, you can knock them over. This one makes everything static, so it stays in place just like you need it to. Now I love the mod Lore Friendly Posters. This adds a great way to break up some of those patterns and walls and bring some life into your rooms. It also adds all the comic book covers as a poster, as well as some new pictures I haven't seen in other mods. The bad thing is the mod author stopped supporting this mod a little over a year ago, so it hasn't been updated in a while, and there's still some bugs in the mod. In some of my videos, you can see posters flicker just before they leave my field of view. But it's still a really cool mod. Do It Yourself is another mod that just speeds up your decoration process. It adds a lot of furniture and shelving units with snap points and then also includes its own decoration packs that allow you to put multiple items and kind of decorate things as you'd want to see them. The next mod we have is Filled Mods. Now Filled Mods is actually a combination of mods the author put out. And it includes armor tables, armor racks, weapon displays, as well as some buffet items with tables already decorated and some shelving units with clothing on it. I've also used the grocery shelves that he provides in a couple of my builds. You'll see that in Hangman's Alley. It just made decorating these stores much easier. Next in my load order is Settlement Objects Expansion Pack. Now this adds a lot of cool structures, has its own furniture, decorations, and power. Now, I use the power side a little bit on my Ready Player One video, as well as areas in my vault build at Ten Pines Bluff. Workshop Decorations Pack adds decorated shelves, desks, tables, it even has vendor counters that are already decorated, but it also has these kind of neat makeshift tables that he just added. And I used some of these as well as the beds in my Ready Player One stacks build uh, just because they were grungy and they looked thrown together. And I kind of like that. I haven't done a whole lot of other scrappy builds, so I plan on using this a little more in the future. Now, the reason why I'm at this settlement is because of the mod Conquest. This was just a barn that I found out here in the Commonwealth, and I liked the area so much that I turned it into a settlement. This was kind of the precursor for why I just built the trading post at Ten Pines Bluff. You'll probably see a lot of similarities. I based it off of this build. One of the difficulties I talked about in the Let's Build video, when I was building this, was that this was never designed to be a settlement and so NPCs don't have proper nav mesh here. 
And also there were items that had no reference ID, so I couldn't even use console commands to remove items. Uh, so it made building in here a challenge, but it also made it a little more kind of cluttered and busy, which I think a lot of settlements need. Oftentimes there's just not enough stuff in them and it doesn't look lived in. And this one definitely had that. There's just pieces of scrap and stuff everywhere. And I liked that about this build. And I tried to capture that again when I rebuilt this settlement at Sunshine Tidings Co-op. This mod will likely take a larger role in my upcoming survival let's play. It'll give me a chance to set up a campsite with a fire and a sleeping bag and kind of give me a place to rest outside of the city or anywhere in the wilderness of the Commonwealth. Unlimited Building is a mod that does exactly what it sounds like. It increases the build to basically an almost unlimited amount. Unfortunately, this mod isn't available on the Nexus or, or Bethesda net anymore. I'm not sure what happened with it, but there are a ton of other mods that do something similar to what this mod does. And really without this mod, I'd never be able to place as many items down as I do in my settlements. Just Debris is a really cool little mod that lets you add texture to repeating patterns in your floors. And I use it a lot just to kind of break up the monotony, but then also to make a settlement look more like it's been there for a while. So when I built the building at Sunshine Tidings, I use this quite frequently just to build up areas where junk and garbage would normally collect, especially if things have been sitting for almost 200 years. Now the mod really works best if you have something like Place Anywhere or Place Everywhere. It allows you to sink them into the ground and kind of get a fine-tuned placement of where you want that scrap to be. And that leads us into Scrap Everything. Now in a normal settlement, not like this one where I used Conquest, this would allow you to scrap just about everything in the settlement, including bodies, debris on the floor, if there's a rock that's jetting up, you'd be able to scrap the rocks. And it just works really well to clean your area up before you start building. And now my last mod, Place Everywhere. This is the mod that basically let my settlements happen. Without this mod, I wouldn't have the ability to move items into areas that the game felt for some reason that it didn't belong. Now I know I could use console commands and mod position XYZ, but place everywhere is a much simpler way to put settlement items exactly where you want them in your settlement. But not only that, it also gives you the ability to manipulate the items once you place them. You can rotate items, you can even change their scale, and this works for any item that you've placed. Hopefully that will give you all a look into the mods that I use. The order that I showed them is the Lord order that I use, verified by loot as well. I went ahead and put links to all the mods I showed in the description if you want to check them out for yourselves. Until next time, be safe out there.